Hello everyone and welcome back to Kaizen Sports. Today we're looking at some more throwing and catching skills and we'll also look at some striking skills as well. And we're going to be using three main sports to go through that. As always, the games that we're playing are very, very diversified. Um, you can adapt them as well, so it suits a range of different situations. And we're going to show levels one, two and three for each game as well, so that you can pick a level that suits your age and stage of development. Before we begin, as always, make sure that you're playing in a very safe area. I would hate for anyone to get injured, so make sure that you're in a safe area, ideally under the supervision of either a teacher or a parent. That said, let's make a start. You'll need just three things. If you've got a drink with you, as you can see mine down here, that's perfect. The only other two essential things that you need with you is a ball, a scrunched up piece of paper will suffice, and a partner. So as quick as you can, go and get yourself a scrunched up piece of paper and a partner. I'll sort the camera around. And we'll begin. Go and do that quick as you can and we'll make a start. Today we're going to be looking at throwing and catching skills in baseball, uh, basketball. In baseball we're going to be looking at striking skills and in volleyball we're going to be looking at some attacking and defending principles. As always these games are going to be for foundation stage early years, they'll also be for key stage one and for key stage two. So pick the level that best suits your age and ability. So let's kick things off straight away. First game we're going to do is basketball and this is in this game all you're going to do is throw the ball into your partner's hoop. Now if you've got a hoop then that's amazing. If you haven't got a hoop, then your partner is quite simply going to stand with their arms in front of them like they're hugging a big tree to make a hoop. And the partner is going to throw the ball with the aim of the ball looping up and then down to get into the hoop. Every time you're successful with a hoop shot, take a step back. Every time you're unsuccessful, take a step forwards. Throw maybe five or ten times and then swap over so your partner gets to be the hoop and then you have a turn to throw as well. We're going to play this for exactly four minutes before I show you the second round of basketball games. Off you go. So I'm playing the game at home. I don't have a hoop. I do have a mark on the wall. So all I'm going to do is loop the ball up and try and throw it on that piece of paper. You can go one stage further by putting a hoop on the floor or if you don't have a hoop that's fine you all you can use is some pens pencils anything like that to mark it so with my hoop i'm going to use the red one hopefully it's a little bit easier to see on the floor i'm going to try and throw my ball off the wall hopefully into the hoop getting closer with your partner make sure that they make their hoop nice and big when they're playing and it's our aim to throw the ball into the hoop. Now, when we talk about throwing, you've got a couple of choices. Option one, we can do what's called the underarm throw. And if you remember, this one's a little bit like an elephant trunk, swinging with a ball right at the end of its trunk. You're going to swing your arm up, and the challenge is to figure out when to let go of the ball. If we let go of the ball too late, then it just goes straight up and down, not far enough forward to reach the hoop. And if we let go too early, it just hits the floor. So when I'm doing my underarm throws and I'm trying to get the ball in the hoop, I'm going to try and let go of the ball at the right time so that it goes up and then back down, hopefully, into the hoop. That's one option you've got, the underarm throws. Getting closer. Another option that you've got, got it, is the overarm throw. Remember the overarm throw is a little bit like we're answering the telephone. Hello. But the ball's gonna be just slightly further back. We're gonna have one hand to point and then we're gonna push the ball against the wall. And hopefully it'll bounce back. In basketball, there is a range of other throws as well. So feel free to use the chest pass that we've worked on the other week or the shoulder pass, which is when we've got the ball just held on the hand and we're just going to push the ball up a little bit like the shot put. Once you've had five or six goes, make sure that you swap over with your partner. Then we both get a turn at practicing 
our throws. If you want to improve your catches as well, rather than the partner being a hoop, the partner might wait until the ball goes under the hoop and then try and catch it as well. This helps to maximize our learning as we get both catching and throwing skills involved at the same time. But for me, I'm just gonna work on my throwing as I try and get the ball to land in the hoop. We're going to play for exactly one more minute and then we'll move on to the level two game. Each time the games get slightly more complicated, they involve more and more different skills and they involve working with other people. So we get to work on our social skills, teamwork. Oh, that pen is not staying, is it? Ghosts. Last 30 seconds, see if you can get it in your partner's hoop a couple more times. I'm finding this very difficult at the moment, I keep putting too much power on it. As always, we trial and error so things get better as we go along. Our brain learns what works and starts copying those things, and our brain learns what doesn't work, so it starts not using those things, it deletes some of that stuff because it knows that it doesn't work. Last throw, see if I can get it in, Ooh, on the edge. So our second game of basketball is going to be the three throw that we've just seen before. One person in the hoop, but this time you're going to get into teams of three. You're going to have one person throwing, trying to get the ball into the hoop, and you're gonna have the other person being the hoop, just like we've done before. The third person is now going to be the defender and it's their job to stand in the way, to try and block the shot, to stop the ball going in the hoop. Now the defender has to be one step away from the person doing the throwing, and they also need to be one step away from the hoop. If they're stood right next to the hoop, or right next to the thrower, the game is just too difficult. It's a little bit like piggy in the middle. A thrower, a catcher, or the hoop in this case, and then one person defending in the middle. We're gonna play for about one minute and then switch roles. Off we go. Now in this version, we're gonna to have to be very clever with the way that we try and trick the defender. Remember the defender is the person in the middle. So if we're just doing a very basic throw, they're probably gonna be able to get into a position to stop us. So can we be clever with the way that we choose to throw the ball? This might mean that we actually need to move with the ball to create a new angle of attack. We might be clever by bouncing the ball off the wall in order to get it around the defender. We might pretend to throw it to commit the defender and then throw it again. It's entirely up to you what tactics you choose to use. But either way, we're going to try and trick the defender, getting the ball into the hoop. If the game's too easy, make the hoop smaller. If, if the game's too easy, sorry, we can make the hoop bigger if the game's too hard, hold on. <clears throat> if the game's too hard, make the hoop bigger, obviously. If the game's too easy, then make the hoop smaller. As always, when we play these games, feel free to adapt them to suit your needs. In your class at the moment, we have some people that are absolutely amazing at basketball and they find it easy to score points. Some children might not be that fortunate. Some children might actually struggle because they haven't practiced it as much. They're what we call inexperienced. So the best way to get experience is to play the game and to make it slightly easier so that they can still get levels of success. If it's too hard, then eventually we receive no success at all. And even though we're learning, we start to get a little bit frustrated sometimes because it's too difficult. We also have the opposite problem if we make the game too easy. We get lots of success, but actually, we learn, but our brain gets incredibly bored of doing the same thing over and over again. So we want it a little bit like Goldilocks. We want it just right. Not too hard, not too easy, just right. So feel free to change the game, the distances, the size of the hoops to suit you. We're gonna play for another two minutes. This is the two versus one, piggy in the middle basketball. Make sure that you change over the person being the hoop and the person being the defender as well as the thrower to ensure that everybody gets a go at the throwing 
and the defending and the catching if you want the hoop to catch. Here's an opportunity for you guys to be very creative. We've spoken before about tricking the defender, hitting the ball off the wall. You might even use different types of throw. You might do a throw that actually goes straight into the hoop. If the defender's close, you might do what we call more of a looping throw where the ball goes up more quickly and then down more quickly, not traveling as far. It's the opposite of what we call a flat throw. A flat throw is something that goes there and back quite quickly and doesn't arc very much. A looping throw is one which loops a lot more. There's a lot more up and down movement. So you can obviously use that to get over the defender, but into the hoop as well. Last minutes before we play our two versus two basketball game. I think my hoop's a little bit closer to the wall. I'm struggling here, but I am getting better. Again, if you don't have a hoop, it's nothing to worry about. You can either make one yourself by holding your hands out, or if you're playing on your own, again, you can use any items around the house. A couple of trainers will maybe do to create a triangle. You might use pens, pencils. You might even, I've seen some children using a towel or a piece of paper on the floor. And if they land it on the tea towel, then that's the point scored. One minute to go. We will have a quick drinks break after this as well because I know some of you will have been moving around a lot. Changing speed, changing direction, different types of throws, tricking the defender. The defender when to move forwards, when to move backwards, when to block. And the final version we're going to play, basketball level three if you wish to play it, is going to be a two versus two game. And this is how it works. Two people working together. You're going to have one person who's the hoop and one person who's playing and trying to score. On the other team, you're going to have another person as a hoop and then the other person acting as the defender. The attacker needs to get the ball into the hoop. If they do that, the hoop then passes the ball to the defender who now becomes the attacker and tries to score. If I haven't made that very clear, I'm going to show you as a quick demonstration. So you're going to have one person stood with their arms making a hoop. Smiley face, so we know it's you guys. And then the other person starts with the ball. On the other team, we're going to have the defender. And we're going to have the other person who's serving as the hoop. So this person here needs to try and get the ball into this hoop. If the hoop gets it, they're going to pass it to the defender and then it's the defender's job to try and get the ball in that hoop. So basically it's a one versus one slash two versus two basketball match. The game starts in, hold on now, I'll give you some time to find a partner, 10 seconds. So we need to be in groups of four now to make a two against two. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go, two versus two basketball game. The version that I'm gonna do is obviously throwing the ball back into the hoop because I'm playing the game on my own. If you're playing with somebody, we should be now in the midst of a two versus two game. Rules of the game are just like normal basketball. So what you can't do is steal the ball out of the hands of another person, but you can intercept or get in the way of a pass. And you might make up an extra rule as well, such as the person with the ball, they can't hold on to it for more than five seconds. They have to try a shot, even if the defender's in a good position. So then we get more turnovers and more chance for the defender to get the ball and then try and score. If we just hold on to the ball forever, then we're never going to take any risks and create chances to score. We've talked about now playing basketball on levels one, two, and three. If the two versus two is too difficult, then go back to the piggy in the middle, the two versus one. And if that's too hard, then you might just go and go back into the teamwork game where you have one hoop, one ball, one attacker, and play with that version.
I'm going to try some chest passes now. I'm going to mix it up. And again, it's not particularly the sport that I'm interested in, is the type of throws that you guys are using. Remember, we're working on skill-based games. The throws that you're doing at the moment might be useful in basketball, sure. It might also be useful in dodgeball. It might also be useful in cricket, some of the throws that you're doing. It might be when you're playing with your friends in the playground and you're trying to keep something off them. It might be actually a bit of a throw that you use to get ready for tennis, an upwards throw but slightly further forward so that it lands in the hoop. It's not the sports that I'm interested in, it's the skills that come with it. So keep practicing all the different throwing and catching skills, particularly the throwing skills that we see in basketball because they will help you in other sports and they'll help you in other activities that you play with your friends as well. We play for 90 more seconds. That's a minute and a half. And then we're going to move on to baseball. This is why I've got spare balls because sometimes I fail, sometimes the ball goes further away than planned. I'm going to try a different type now. I'm going to try the one, the shoulder pass. So this is the one a little bit like the shot, but where I'm just going to push the ball against the wall so it lands in the hoop. Last 60 seconds. Once we've done all the activities, we will have a little bit of time at the end as well, where you can then pick the activity and the level which you choose to play on. We spoke about in other weeks, we're trying to practice the skill. It's not the sport that's necessarily important, but you might have a favorite activity. In the same respect, if you want to work on reading out loud, it makes sense to actually pick a book that you enjoy. So if I was learning to speak out loud, I probably wouldn't read Macbeth. Um, I might read something like some of the Harry Potter books. I really like them, so I'd practice public speaking or speaking louder out loud with the Harry Potter books. The outcome is the same. I'm still working on certain skills, throwing, catching, striking, but I'm doing it in a way that I enjoy. A book or sport, in this case, of my choice. And time is up. Grab yourself a very quick drink. Once you've done that, find a partner to work with because you're now going to play a one versus one baseball match. So get yourself ready. I'm going to keep my hoop out. I may need it. It's really warm at the moment. In Leeds, it's beautifully sunny weather. So hopefully you guys are having a bit of a nice sun at the moment as well. If you're playing with early years, reception, even sometimes in key stage one, there's nothing wrong with just sticking with level one. You might try level two and then go back to level one. There's no rush to get to level three at all. Some of the stuff in level three is actually quite complicated. So if the children can't do it yet and you're not ready for it, then don't. There's absolutely no rush to get there at all. We're at school and we're here to learn for a long time. So don't be in a rush to take shortcuts and try and do things that are actually way beyond your skill set. Keep practicing skills at a level you can do and slowly we start to build up. So that said, next one is baseball. Now a baseball strike is going to be slightly different. All I'd like you to do is stand so your shoulders facing the wall or your partner. Your partner's gonna throw you the ball and then with your hand, you're gonna swing it around like you're swiping loads of stuff off the desk and you're going to hit the ball back to your partner who's going to try and catch it. We're gonna do this three or four times and then we're gonna swap over. So it'll be your, uh, you throwing the ball to your partner and your partner hitting it back. We're gonna do this for three minutes before we put it into something similar to a game. Off you go. I'm just going to do this to the wall and back because again I'm working on my own but each time our eyes need to be on the ball when our ball comes down in front of us we're going to swing our arm across now if your partner's throwing the ball at you it's going to come at you from a different angle so while you're watching the ball you need to judge 
when you're going to swing your arm across in order to hit the ball. And that's part of the challenge, it's all about the timing. Again, if you can get your partner to throw the ball to you, that's even better if you're at home playing on your own and you haven't gone back to school yet for whatever reason, then you can just game that I'm playing. Remember, scrunched up pieces of paper, folded up socks, they're all perfect. If the one thrown against the wall and back is too difficult, like I'm struggling with, there's nothing wrong with just throwing up in front of you and hitting it there. The main action we're looking for here is the sweeping motion as we move our arm and turn our body as well, turning our body and our hips to move the ball as we push it against the wall. Make sure you practice it on both hands as well, your left and your right. I'm right-handed, but I'm just practicing on my left at the moment because I can see you the whole time. I always feel a little bit rude when I'm practicing with my back turned on you guys. Plus, I need to practice a little bit more with my left hand anyway. Here again, we're working a little bit on throwing skills, catching in my case, and we're also working on striking skills as well. So these striking skills, you might use this in badminton, although there's a bit of a wrist flick, but the, the eye time. You might use this in tennis. It might be with cricket where we lifted the bat up and tried to hit it for a six. Might be for dodge uh, baseball. Might be for softball. There's a whole range of different movements where you need to do a sweeping movement. It might be for those of you in the future that maybe want to take up boxing. Instead of a sweeping motion down here, it's just going to be a fist and then a clinching motion. But nevertheless, it's using our body and making it turn. <clears throat> and time's up. We've done level one. If you want to continue doing level one, that's fine. If you feel quite comfortable and confident with that, then we can move the game on to level two. So when you play the game on level two, all you're going to do is when your partner throws you the ball, you're going to try and hit it, not to your partner, but somewhere else in the room. Now, if it takes your partner seven steps to get to where the ball is, you as the striker score seven points. If it takes the person two steps to get to where the ball is, you would score two points and so on. If you hit the ball and they catch it, then it's five points for the server straight away. And you've got a choice. You can either play this one against one, or if you want, you can play it one against three. And the closest person to the ball would make the steps to go and get it. I personally prefer one versus one because there is one versus one because there's a lot more movement and everyone has a lot more turn to do the striking of the ball. So as far as I'm concerned, one versus one is perfect. But you know you're classing yourselves better than I do. So if you want to work in a larger group, then that's fine with me, as long as you can do it safely. Three minutes, off you go. I'll tell you when 90 seconds is up. So for those of you that are playing one versus one, you can swap over. So you've each got a turn to do the uh, batting and each got a turn to do the throwing. We might play slightly longer than three minutes because this bit's quite an important skill and hopefully we should get lots of turns to hit the ball. To make sure that you're playing it safe, if you are playing it in school, please make sure that the ball doesn't hit the roof. If you are in a situation, teachers, where it just isn't that safe a space to be able to play this game, then as we spoke about before, play the game back on level one. There's still utility in that. This game is more or less the same, only this time when we're striking the ball, we're thinking about different distances, different angles, because we want the ball ideally to go into gaps between other people, into areas of the classroom, where it's more difficult for the server to go and get that ball. Again, the more steps that they take, the more points we earn as the striker. Now, strike is usually a word that we use with football. Someone, oh, I want to be the striker. All we mean by the striker is someone who strikes the ball. So technically in football, everyone's the striker because everyone kicks the ball. 
What usually people mean by that, though, is they want to be the attacker, they want to be the goal scorer, they want to be the people towards the opposition's goal, whose main job it is to put the ball into the goal. Here, when I'm doing basket, uh, baseball, I'm still the striker because I'm using my hand to strike the ball. 90 seconds is up, so change over the server. Now it becomes the striker, and if you've just struck the ball, you're now going to become the server and throw the ball to your partner. 90 more seconds, off we go. To make the game easier, you might have the server, the person throwing the ball, standing slightly closer to the striker. To make the game harder, they might stand slightly further away, or it might be when they're serving the ball, they serve the ball much quicker to make it easier, a little bit slower. You might even, for the younger ones, put a bounce into it. So as the bounce is coming back up, they've got time to think and hit the ball. They can hit it on the up bounce or they can hit it on the low one. Either way, the ball stays in the air slightly longer so it's easier to hit. Ooh. 45 seconds before we move on to our final variation of baseball. For the final variation, you will need a little bit more space. If you've got all the space in the world, amazing. For those of you that are playing this in the school hall and have got me on the big screen, hello everyone. There's going to be a lot of space for you to be able to play the final version. As always, we keep it in small groups, as we should even when we're doing PE lessons outside. There's nothing worse than seeing a cricket match or a baseball match that's 15 versus 15, where you've got one person hitting it and 14 people stood in the queue getting kind of bored. Sure, the first few might have a go, but if you're 14th, it could be several minutes before you get to hit the ball. It's not good enough. We need to be in small enough groups so that everyone gets a go. We want everyone to have lots of turns with the ball because the more turns you have with the ball, the better you're going to be. In the same respect, when we work in school and we're using our pencils, pens, we encourage every child to have the pen as often as they can so that they can work. We wouldn't have one book and then share it between 30 people. In the same respect, we shouldn't be having one ball shared around 30 people either. And time's up. Well done, everyone. We're going to now move on to the third and final variation of baseball. And this is how it looks. You're going to organise teams of four, three against one. This is how it's going to work. The one person, after they get thrown the ball, is going to try and hit the ball to somewhere else in the classroom and if you can do it safely, run to the person who served the ball, tap them, and then move back to where you first started. Every time you manage to do that, there and back, there and back, there and back, that counts as one point. Now, as soon as the fielders collect the ball and throw it back to the server and the server catches it, then you can't score any more points through running. You are out if the ball gets caught, and yeah, that's, that's the only way you can be out, apart from if you play it unsafely. If you've been very unsafely, then you are out as well. So you'll need a server, the person who's going to throw the ball and then hopefully receive the ball off the fielders. You're going to need one batter who's going to be the person who's striking the ball using the skills we've just worked on. And the other two people are going to be the fielders. And it's their job to quickly go and collect the ball from inside the classroom and throw it back to the server. Remember, as soon as the server catches the ball, the runner can't score any more points. What I'd recommend is the batter, the striker, maybe has something like three goes. They get to hit the ball three times, score as many as they can in that go, and then swap over. I'm gonna give you about four minutes or so, so if you are in that team of four, you can have one minute each, and then we'll get plenty of time of batting, serving, and fielding. Off we go. I'll let you know when one minute is up so that you can change over so you all get a fair amount of time. We should be able to get in three or four different hits before we change over and allow our classmates to have a go because we want them to get better as well. We're not selfish, we don't just care about ourselves, we want to make sure that everyone improves. It's part of being respectful, making sure that your teammates have an opportunity to learn as well. That's why when the teacher's talking, we make sure that we're nice and quiet because it allows us to learn 
but then also it lets our teammates, the other people in our class learn as well because they can listen. So it's very responsible and very respectful to take turns, to share and to let other children have a go at being the batter as well, the striker. So good. <clears throat> One minute is up, change over the server and change over the batter. So you should have different servers, different batters. One minute, off you go. Again, if this game's a little bit too difficult, you can go back to level two. You might go back to level one, it's entirely up to you. Hopefully this at the moment should look like a mini baseball game. Might look a little bit like rounders, softball, those games are very similar. A lot of the rules are intertwined. What we mean by intertwined is that they're kind of they're very similar, they run in the same thread as each other. Oops. Oops, dear me, I'm having a nightmare here. Sounds to me like I need a little bit more practice. And that's another minute past, change over. We should now be on our third batter, our third striker. Off you go. Oh no. I landed in my plant pot and it's covered in soil. That's no good. You know, right mess of the room. So again, if you're the batter, we can really start thinking now, where are we going to hit the ball? Are we going to aim it upwards to go over somebody? Are we going to aim it downwards to maybe go between some tables to make it a little bit more difficult to get? Teachers, as always, you're in charge for making sure that everyone plays safe. At the same time, we obviously want to make sure that everyone's got that opportunity to learn and get even better than they already are. Final hit for this batter. And time's up, change over one last time. So we are now onto the final batter. Get yourself ready, one minute, off you go. So hopefully you can now see how we started to build up the skills. We've looked at hitting the ball to our partner. We've looked at hitting the ball away from our partner in a competitive match. And now we're looking at hitting the ball away from multiple people and quickly moving in order to score points. This way it's like a mini baseball game. Obviously we're not following the proper rules of baseball because space is limited and we don't need the proper rules of baseball to develop those skills. For example, many of you aren't using a bat. You're not actually using a baseball. You're not playing in a correctly measured out to scale baseball stadium with all the bases the right place apart and neither are you wearing all the correct equipment, including having a backstop. That's what we mean when we look in the PE curriculum and we talk about modified sports. We change the game so that we can work on the skills. That's the important bit. And time is up. Grab yourself a drink and then we'll move on to volleyball, which is going to involve attacking and defending and really thinking about that tactical side of things. Grab yourself a drink. For volleyball to start with as well, you'll just need a one versus one. So find a partner to work with. We'll fly through this. And again, I promise that I'll leave space at the end so you can go back and play your favorite sport. It might be the basketball, it might be the baseball, it might be the volleyball. It might be something slightly different that still works on the skills that we were talking about. Last 10 seconds to find yourself a partner. And then we'll make a start. So with your partner, what we'd like you to do is one of you stand 
on one side of the table and one of you stand on the other side of the table. If you haven't got a table with you, that's not a problem. You can just create something that might use a net or again, you might put a few markers or hoops on the floor as an area that you can't step into. And this is how you're gonna play the game. We're gonna get rid of our picture that we did before. All we're going to do is as I draw my table, I'll do it from the overhead view. So that's your table or your desk. You're going to have one person stood on one side. They're going to start with the ball. Side without the ball. The aim of the game, when your teammate hits the ball over to you, you're going to work with them, not against them, to hit it back so that we can slowly start to build up a rally. And all we mean by a rally is seeing how many times we can get the ball backwards and forwards to each other. If that's too difficult, because I know that foundation stage and key stage one are watching as well as early years. So what you can do is if the game's quite difficult, what you might do is just throw the ball over the table to your partner who catches it and then they're going to serve the ball back over. When we talk about serving the uh, game of volleyball, we've got two different ways we can do it. The first thing we can do is try and hit the ball off our wrists to make the ball go forward. Children will usually struggle with this, so don't be afraid if you find that difficult at all. Instead, just use your hand to push the ball over to the other side of the table for your partner to catch. If you're feeling a little bit more confident, you might throw the ball up and do what we call a pike, where we're hitting the ball with the aim of it going towards our partner. We're gonna practice for three minutes and then again, we'll start building it up and putting it into a more and more complex and challenging game. For now, working together, three minutes, off you go. So you should have your table in front of you. Hopefully you've moved all the crayons, bits of paper and the blue tack to the side and that glue stick as well, that needs moving. Gracias, thank you very much. And then all you're gonna do, push the ball over to the other side of the table so your partner can catch. For me, I am playing the game at home. If you're playing at home as well, because I know that not everybody's gone back. I know a few people are still off. Those people that are vulnerable need shielding. So you could play the game like me where you're gonna hit the ball and aim to try and get it in the hoop. Here, we're still working on the coordination skills. We're working on striking the ball even though we're striking the ball a slightly different way. In baseball, it was that kind of action. Now we're looking at this kind of action. So again, building up different skills in a one versus one cooperative game. When we say cooperative, all we mean is working together. We are cooperating. Co, meaning to or with somebody and operate is to do something, to use it. So two people using something or two people working, two people going through a process, that's all we mean by co-operate. So when we're playing games that are cooperative, it means working together. It's the opposite of games that are competitive. When you com play competitive games, you compete. You're playing against each other. With these cooperatives, you're playing with each other. A few of you might have played certain games and you can go on co-op mode. And that's just what it's short for, cooperative. It's co-op mode where actually you work together with another person or a group of people, a team, a squad, to try and beat your opponent. Or you might use it just to work together to try and get the highest score that you can cooperating. Things like making daisy chains, cooperative. Working together to solve a problem, cooperative. Going for a bike ride, cooperative. Playing a computer game, but where you're on the same team, co-op, cooperative. Games like football, penalty shootout, competitive. You're playing against each other. Most sports, competitive. You are playing against each other. Even though you are playing against each other, there's still a small element of cooperative work because you need to work together to make sure that both teams are playing fair. It's very important that we play fair. 
if you play fair, people want to play with you. People are likely to invite you back. They want you to play with them. So when we play fairly, we end up being very popular and we end up being invited back to play the game over and over again. The more we get invited back and offered to play, the more we can improve. Last minute of this cooperative mode, being on the same team, playing with each other, before we play against each other. I'm going to try and do this on my left hand now. Of course, you might notice that this is quite similar to a tennis serve. Again, I'm not really too bothered about the sport. If you want to call this tennis, call it tennis. I'm not really bothered. I'm interested in the skills that go along with it. In this case, coordinating my body to try and get the ball to bounce in the hoop. Or if you're in the classroom, to get it over the table, but to your partner as well. So let's move into the second part. This is going to be a two versus two teamwork rally. Now, if you're in foundation stage, early years, this might be a little bit challenging, but we can certainly give it a go because it gives the children a benchmark to try and reach. So this is how it looks. We've got at the moment our one versus one game. This person's got awesome sideburns. We're now going to adapt the game into a two versus two. This time when the ball comes back over, we're not going to catch it and then serve it back. We're going to try and serve it back first time. So hopefully, if this is the table here, the ball should go one side to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other, and so on. As our partners hit the ball upwards so that it goes back over. You can play this game on your own at home. Instead of a table, I'm just going to play against the wall. And I'm going to see how many times I can keep it. Whoa, that was a bit wild. To try and keep it up against the wall. Again, if you're playing at school, have a table, have two people on each side, and then coordinate. So work cooperatively against. Let's do with first. Let's work cooperatively with the other team. So you're working with your partner to get the ball over to the other side in a way that they can then hit the ball back to you. Three minutes before we go into our full-blown volleyball match. Go. So now we're thinking about our teammate. Can we hit the ball in a way that's going to make it easy for them to return it? If I've got the ball and I smash it hard against them, it's going to be very difficult for them to return it. So can I turn the ball in a way where it's easy for them to hit the ball back and start to build up their rally? So we might make the ball go quite high. If the ball goes a little bit higher, it spends more time in the air, which gives your partners more time to hit the ball back. If we hit the ball too hard, it just fires straight back and it's going to be too difficult. Again, if it's too difficult, there's nothing wrong with putting a bounce in there as well. Everybody learns at different speeds. We've all got different strengths and weaknesses which is a very, very good thing indeed. Everybody's different, and that's what makes life very interesting. For those people that are very experienced, and you've done this a lot before, you might be able to hit it back first time. For those people that are less experienced and simply just haven't practiced enough yet, they might throw in a bounce before they return. Adding a bounce in gives you a little bit more time to hit the ball back. Of course, you might change the hand that you use as well. You might play whoops, without a bounce. It's entirely up to you. If the younger ones are finding this too difficult, by the way, there's nothing wrong with going back and doing it on level one, which is where you're just serving it to your partner. They're catching it and then serving it back. If balls are too difficult, in future weeks you might use beanbags. Beanbags, of course, are a lot easier to catch. And instead of a striking action, all they're going to do push the ball. It's not strictly a throw, it's more of a more of a push as they lift the beanbag up to their partner. This is more of a striking action as we're hitting the ball, not throwing it. One minute left and then we'll go into our volleyball game, our match, our competitive match, so we're playing against each other, and then we'll free up ten minutes at the end 
to make sure that you can return to your favourite game. And teachers, as always, will make sure that we finish a few minutes early so that we can start that transition of going towards the next lesson. That children will need time to cool down. They might need a drink that they need to grab. Toilets are always needed. So we'll make sure that we're free in time for that, as well as putting the classroom back together if there is a few bits and pieces that have been moved. Oh, I've lost that one. Last 30 seconds. Oops. And time's up, final one. We are now going to play a two versus two compet match. Now to make it look a little bit more like volleyball, what you could do is ask the children to sit down so that when they play their game, their arms are actually beneath the table. Unlike tennis, with volleyball, we're actually using a much higher net. I think their net's like 10 foot in the air or something like that. It's much, much taller. So for that reason, when we play the game, we're now gonna push the ball upwards and over to the other side for our teammates. If we're hitting the ball upwards, if the ball spends more time in the air, which now gives our teammate more time to return the ball. We are now playing for the next three minutes competitively. So if you manage to get the ball to bounce once on their side, you score the point. Of course, to make the game easier, you might have the ball bouncing twice on their side to score the point. If it bounces once, then you've got more time to try and hit the ball back. So. Everyone on your knees. Below the height of the table would be perfect. Make sure you play the game safely, of course, and then hit the ball so that it goes over the table onto your partner's side of the area. You can play the game standing up if you want. You might play the game where the ball bounces on the table. You might stick with the cooperative game where you're playing together. It's entirely up to you how you play it. If you're quite experienced year sixes, that's how you might play the game. Playing full blown against each other, below the table, able to hit it back first time. If you're playing again with slightly younger ones, it might be enough to throw the ball over the table for your partner to get before then they throw the ball back over. We've only got about an hour or so, so if some of the games look a little bit similar, that's fine. If we're doing a maths lesson, we wouldn't work on the two times table, and then the next 15 minutes work on the five times table, and then for the final 15 minutes or so, then start busting out fractions and percentages. We work on the same thing for an extended period of time till we've started to get the hang of it, and then we apply it to more difficult situations. It's pointless learning algebra and really thinking about all that kind of stuff if actually we don't understand the relation of numbers and we don't no basic functions such as addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, and so on. So if you're doing the game that's very, very simple, that's absolutely fine. If you're playing the game as year sixes, and you're playing the really tough version, then that's fine as well. We're gonna play for exactly two more minutes, and then we'll free up, like we said, five minutes or so at the end where you can re-pick a game that you want to play. Oops. For some of you, what I'm asking you to do is actually very, very difficult indeed. So if you find that you are struggling, that's okay. That's actually why we come to school. We come to school to do things that we can't do and struggle until we can do it. If you just came into school and could do everything, you'd get very bored very quick and you probably wouldn't learn loads. You certainly wouldn't learn a lot of new things. What you have to do at school, you have to do one of the most difficult things that anybody ever has to do. You have to learn. Learning is very, very difficult indeed. It's hard, it's frustrating, things go wrong, sometimes we fail. Learning is very, very difficult indeed. So if you are finding something a little bit tough, Teachers find things difficult. Parents find things difficult. Coaches such as myself find things difficult. Just because we're older 
doesn't mean the challenge gets easier. The challenge is the same, it's us that gets better. So think about it, if you were to be five years old and try and read the final Harry Potter book with all those big words, that would be very, very difficult. Actually, once you start practicing and you read lots of books, you get better. The book stays the same, the book doesn't get easier. It's just that you get better. And that's what happens with the learning. It's not that these games get easier, because they don't. It's that you get better. And the only way for you to get better is to practice and to learn. And learning, like I say, it's very, very difficult. So persevere, keep with it, and eventually the game won't get easier. You will get better. Right, guys, final five minutes. Go and pick another game. You might pick basketball where you're throwing the ball in the hoop. You might have it in the hoop with a defender. You might even have your two versus two basketball match. You might play baseball, and we've got three options there. You might play the game where you hit the ball to your partner. You might play the game where you hit the ball away from your partner, and they've got to get the ball. Or you might even play against three different people. And finally, you might play the game of volleyball where you're serving the ball to your partner. You might team up with somebody that you're both working together to try and build up a rally when you play to each other. Or you might play the game that we've just done below the table and making sure that you're playing against each other with the ball bouncing either once or twice on your opponent's side. It's entirely up to you what you do for the next four minutes. As long as you're doing it safely, off you go. For me, I'm going to do the, the standing up volleyball I do like the challenge. I like this one because there's lots of movements. It does test me. The game that I'm playing is the version that I'm playing on my, ho on my own at home. Your version might be slightly different. Some of you, I imagine, have gone straight for the two versus two basketball option. I think if I had some friends that were here right now, that's the version that I would go with. But obviously, play the game that suits you. You might even have to have a, a conversation with some of your teammates. You even pick some different people to work with. You might just actually play the game on your own like I'm doing. Sometimes it's nice just to be able to do that, to not have to worry about anybody else and to just practice the game on your own, working in your own time. It can be quite therapeutic. What I mean by therapeutic is it's, it feels really nice just to kind of do something. Like Some people think that colouring is quite therapeutic, it's quite relaxing. It's quite um, stress reducing. We don't feel as worried. We kind of, we're relaxed and we're doing something that's not easy, but it's just nice to work on our own. Like we say, anyway, the task doesn't get any easier. It stays the same. It's just us that gets better. So it might look like the task is getting easier but actually it's just that we're getting better it's like when you outgrow your shoes it's not that your shoes are getting smaller i mean it might look like that but your shoes aren't getting any smaller it's your feet that are getting bigger so if you've got a younger brother or sister and you look at their shoes you can't fit into them it's not because the shoes are too small it's because you're too big it's you that changes I think we talked about that the other week, the importance of, of being active and not passive. You have to change things. It's you that learns. It's you that develops. It's you that goes to help others. You that shows leadership skills, social skills, other skills such as the ones that we've been working on today, helping other people that actually might find it quite difficult. <clears throat> One minute left. I think, yes, one minute left. And then we'll have a really quick debrief. And then I'll give you some time to put the room back in working order, ready for when you go back into your next lesson. I know some of you have just finished your lunch. You've probably got another lesson to do. I don't know what that lesson is, but what another great opportunity to learn something new. Something that might be helpful to you. It might not even be helpful to you. It might be helpful to somebody else. But if you know it, you can then go and help somebody else. And that's another reason why we're at school. We're not just learning things for ourselves, although that's useful. We're learning things so that we can help other people. And teachers are absolute masters at that. 
They've spent years and years and years learning lots of things just so that they can pass on something to try and help you. Being a teacher, if any of you want to be a teacher, it's a very hard working job, but it's one of the most important jobs on the planet. Teaching other people how to be great. And hopefully you might be able to do some of that yourself. If you're quite good at a particular sport, you might help somebody else. And that's what leadership skills are. That said, guys, we have run out of time. Just like to say thank you very much for everybody tuning in this week. It's been great to work with you all again. Hopefully you've picked up some skills that you can use when you're playing with your friends in the playground, when you're playing on the weekend, other sports or any other activities. And remember, the activity doesn't get any easier. It's you that gets better. Thank you again, everybody. Make sure you stay safe, stay active, and I will see you all again next week. Enjoy the sunshine. Bye.